Hi, I'm Adrian Schneer, Advancement Coach and Strategist, Lawyer and Professor, and you're listening to the Advancement Spot Podcast, the podcast all about academic and professional skills, strategy, and mindset to help you make big moves to achieve a life beyond your wildest dreams. If you're looking to accomplish more and take your next steps with supportive and experience-informed strategies, look no further. Let's get started. Hi, and welcome to the Advancement Spot Podcast. I'm your host, Adrian Schneer, and I am so glad that you've taken time out of your busy day to spend some here with us. Today on the podcast, joining me is Jonathan McKenzie, our COO. You've heard of him before in a previous episode, and you learned about him in that episode too. But today you're going to learn even more. So Jonathan, welcome to the podcast again. Thank you. And what are we talking about today? We're talking about interviews. Yeah, we're talking about interviews. We're talking about the good, the bad, and the ugly. And we're going to tell you about our own experiences in interviews and things that have happened to us. And and I think also what we've learned from all of that. So why don't we kick it off? Jonathan, do you want to get started by telling us a story? Sure, I can talk about one job interview I had I think it was the end of my articling term when I was thinking about whether to go back to the firm I articled that or to join another firm in another part of the city that actually offered me a job as an associate. So I was I was kind of at a critical juncture at that time. So the choice I had was either stay at my firm where I had articled or go to another firm that I didn't know as well, but that was they were offering me slightly higher compensation, a better location in the city for sure. But during my, it was my second interview with them, I was leaning towards them, but the interview was just the, the, the vibe I got, the, the atmosphere of the interview was just so negative that by the end of it, I didn't want to work there anymore. I had no interest and just never, you know, at the end of the day, I, I didn't take that job just because I could see what it would be like to work there just, just through the interview. Mm-hmm. And so let me ask you a few questions. So first, I, I just want to say that we as interviewees are interviewing the firm or the, the, the potential employer just as much as they are interviewing us, right? That's right. Yeah. When we go in, we can't just assume, okay, I'm going to take this job no matter what, because you actually want to be happy there, right? You actually want to be able to grow and advance and enjoy all of the time, effort, and hours that you're spending there. And so when you said, you know, the vibe, often that's something that we can't put our finger on, right? There were the, something was off, the vibe was off. Was there something in particular that, that stood out to you? Sure. The person interviewing me, who was one of the named partners of the firm, basically told me that, okay, so here's the job, here's the salary. And then I said, and I was, I actually was kind of surprised they offered it to me, but you know, I, I was like, okay, I, I said, I just need 24 hours to think about it because this is a major decision. And quite frankly, that's a reasonable, from my perspective now, you know, 10, 11 years later, that is a reasonable thing to say because when you're making a major life choice, taking 24 hours to think about a job offer is, it's totally reasonable. So I didn't ask him for a week, I asked him for 24 hours. And then his response was, he basically just got basically angry at me in the room and said, accused me of trying to quote, strong arm him or to use his job offer to strong arm my current employer into matching their job offer and salary, which was absolutely not what I was trying to do. Mm-hmm. In fact, I, was, I had no plan of asking my, the current firm to match that salary offer. I simply wanted 24 hours to think about it because I, at the time, was leaning towards leaving the firm that I was at for a variety of reasons, namely... The, the, the biggest one was the commute, which was absolutely terrible for me at the time, taking a close to two hours of my day. But the, um, the response I got from the firm making the new job offer was just, it, it would just completely threw me off. And then I could see like, you know, they didn't, they seemed to be suspicious of me. It was just weird. It was a weird thing to say for someone asking for 24 hours, to respond to a job offer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and I think that there's something really important to learn from that. And 
from my perspective, and you can tell me if you maybe would take something different away from this, but my perspective is that one of my, one of my thoughts is that when you're asking for something reasonable, if you get an unreasonable response, that should set off red flags for you because your time and your effort are worth something. Your well-being is worth something to you and the rest of your life. And so asking for something totally reasonable, like 24 hours, should be met with a reasonable response. And so I think that from that, and so here's, let's let's jump to the end. Did you take that job offer or not? No. No. And so I think that in that moment, you learned a really valuable lesson or anybody could learn a really valuable lesson that it's okay to set your own boundaries in terms of how how you should be treated in a workspace. That's right. That's right. You know, like it's obviously I didn't work there and, you know, like you can't, eat. yeah, setting boundaries in a workplace is obviously it's important, especially like it's, it's a bit intimidating as a more junior employee meeting with someone who's like 40 to 50 years older than you, who's been in a business for like 20 years before you were born, offering you a job. But, you know, it just felt in that, in that circumstance, there was no way I was going to take that job just because, you know, when someone's like basically questioning my integrity in the interview and suggesting that I have some ulterior motive to use their law firm to 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 run a salary offer by another firm to try and play one off the other when that actually and really was not happening. Just it, it just was like a non-starter for me. And I said, forget it. This is not the place for me. Mm-hmm. And what was your next step after that interview? After that interview, I just I formed my the firm I was at that I would just be continuing with them. Yeah. So you ended up staying at that at the at the original firm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so All right. So any concluding that story, any sort of like takeaways from that for you? If you're if you're interviewing somewhere and you're getting a really bad sense or vibe as to what the company culture is like, usually where there's smoke, there's fire. So and I have no regrets not taking that job. I simply don't. And then I know I followed the firm's website over the years. I noticed a lot of lawyers came and went. It wasn't like a place I was going to spend the rest of my career anyway. Yeah, lots of turnover. Yeah. 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 And so, so that's actually something to look for too, isn't it? Is how how frequently there's turnover at a workplace, not just a firm, but any workplace. And that's correct. I mean, depending on the industry you're in, if you can see, I mean, there's two, there's two signs of high turnover at a workplace. One is the, the website keeps changing because person A and person B and person C keep changing or whatever their, their role is. There's someone new every six to 12 months, or you see the same company advertising over and over and over again. So that clearly shows that there is a lot of turnover and there's a lot of turnover that's a symptom of, of other issues in the organization. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, that's for sure. So maybe I'll, I'll tell a story now and then you can think of another one. Sure. So I have a few that I'm thinking of. One, I was interviewing after my articling term, my firm that I articled at, I absolutely loved, and they weren't hiring back. That was like commonly known. And so I was looking. And so I was interviewing at a bunch of firms, well-established firms in Toronto that practiced in the area that I did my research in. And so I was really quite interested in their work. And there were only a few firms that actually did that kind of work. And so I ended up going to interview at one of them. And I was really excited because I had met one of the partners at a networking event. And they said to me, oh, yeah, listen, like your experience is right on on the ball. You know, we're we're looking for somebody just like you. And so then when I applied, I was called for an interview and I showed up at, you know, something like seven o'clock in the morning for this interview. And the staff, the support staff had been there all night. They were walking around. This firm had quite a large lobby. They were walking around in their, you know, slippers and blankets at seven o'clock in the morning, absolutely screaming at each other, absolutely screaming at each other. And I walked in, in my, you know, my press pants, my blazer, my heels, the whole thing. And I'm just like sitting there watching this like drama absolutely unfold at seven o'clock in the morning. And I just sat there and it was as if I wasn't there. So I thought, okay, 
I don't know that this is a place I want to come <laughs> and spend my time. That was red flag number one. And then I was called into the interview. The partner who I initially had actually made contact with wasn't there, but there were two, actually three other partners who were there. And we had this interview in, in quite a large forward room. I was, as I said, you know, in my, you know, this interview outfit with the, you know, everything was, you know, pressed and and everything, you know, you have like the nice shoulders on your blazers. I mean, it was like, you know, I was very, I was, you know, I, I love being put together for for interviews. Because, you know, what you wear is a representation of, of who you are. The way that you present yourself is absolutely a representation of, of who you are, your reputation, and your own personal brand, quite frankly. So you should be proud of the way that you look. And anyway, I sat down in this interview and all of the partners were wearing like golf t-shirts and jeans. For me, because I think about things quite deeply, I, you know, just in that split second, I thought, well, you know, they could at least have the decency of like putting on a blazer or something for an interview. You know, I felt I felt as though they, you know, when you're interviewing somebody, you've got to show up as the employer too. Like you've got to show up. You have to represent yourself in the firm just as well as you want the interviewee to represent themselves. So that was my sort of second sort of red flag. And then the interview started. They started asking questions and we were having a reasonable conversation. And the topic of my teaching and research came up. And at the time I had a PhD, I was finished law school, finished articling, and I was still a professor. I still am. And what they said to me was, okay, so when are you going to stop all of this research and teaching stuff? And I looked at them and this is not something that I would have said, you know, 10 years before or even five years before, but I, I went through a lot of growth through grad school and through law school. And they, when they said that to me, when they said, you know, when are you going to stop all this teaching and research stuff? I mean, this had been my life before that. And, and it brought value to them because of the types of cases that they took, which I still find fascinating. And I looked at them and I think I even sat up a bit and I said, oh, I don't think you understand who, like, who I am then if you're asking me to stop all of this. And they sort of sat there. And stared at me for a second because they didn't expect that answer. They expected me to say, oh, as soon as I get the job here, then I'll quit all the other stuff and I'll spend 24 hours a day here. And they didn't get that answer. And I had also spoken with somebody else at that firm who said that, you know, when you're an associate at this firm, you're here till 10, 11 o'clock at night. You're responsible for, you know, tens and tens of, of, other, of other people's work. And so I sort of had this idea that they were expecting me to come and spend 24 hours there. But at this point in my career, even though I was quite junior as a lawyer, in my in academia, I wasn't. And I wasn't about to really invalidate my previous experience in order to satisfy them, quite frankly. So when I said that to them, they sort of like, you know, stared at me for a second. They said, what? I said, oh, yeah, like this is part of what you get. You know, this is a benefit to you. And I started explaining why that was a benefit to them. And the, the interview kept going and it was fine. You know, we shook hands and the interview ended and I didn't expect to get that job. But they called the next day and they, and they offered me the job. And without a heartbeat, I just said, you know, I thank you so much, but I've actually decided to go in a different direction. And they were shocked. They were totally shocked. And I felt very bad because the other partner had had, you know, introduced me and I, I don't know what role they played in actually getting the interview, if if they played any role at all. But I but I ended up actually calling the other partner who wasn't in the interview, who I had my first contact with. And I was very forthright with that, with that partner. And I said, listen, this is why I said no. This is why I turned down the job because the the role was actually, I think, to work with the partner who had who I had initially made contact with. And so I, I laid it all out and I was very honest and I said, you know, and this is why I've decided to go in another direction, but I really appreciate any effort that you put in and, you know, I've appreciated, you know, speaking and, and all of that. And we ended the conversation very positively. They understood and they said, oh, you know, basically, I'm sorry that you had that experience. I wasn't there. And they they were actually surprised that I had had that experience, but I was happy that I was honest about it and I was happy that I stuck to my guns and I was in alignment with what I believed because there was no way that I would go to work somewhere that didn't value the experience that I was bringing. So that's one 
That's one of my many interview experiences. And I think that it was a valuable one because it it helped me understand, understand and learn how to value myself and the significance of the experience that I bring. And sometimes it takes somebody else questioning that in order for you to actually have those realizations. So that would be, that would be my first, my first story. So. Well, look, yeah, it's, it's important that, you know, especially if it comes out of an interview that they want, basically want you to give up everything else in your life or other things in your life that are very important to you, then obviously, you know, it's, it's the wrong workplace period. It's just when you really have to have a strong sense of who you are, what you want to do, what you're not prepared to do. And look, if someone says like, give up like something that you've been doing for a long time to work here, I mean, at the end of the day, I think it's a huge, it, it's, it's simply, it's inappropriate in my opinion. I mean, they should see, especially if you're, teaching, they should have seen that that was a huge absolute value to the law firm, to the firm itself, because then they would be able to say, look, we have faculty uh, as one of our counsel. Instead, they saw it as some sort of problem for them, which is bizarre because, you know, a lot of firms or businesses that have employees who teach in academia, different fields, they actually play that up quite a lot because, I mean, they have a thought leader in the industry on their staff. You know, it helps them get, get a, you know, advertise themselves and promote themselves and, and give better service to their clients and give a competitive edge in the marketplace. Because when you're when you're teaching, you really have to know, you obviously really have to know your material inside and out. And it shows that you also have organizational skills and that you're able to be a leader and that you're able to talk and that you're able to multitask. Yeah, well, and also being part of academia, you know, I've, I'm still part of academia and I think also one of the most significant, char- you know, traits or characteristics of having a, a faculty member on staff is that the the faculty member is quite, firstly, up to date much more up to date on the information that they know than than others may be. And second, that when you're engaging with students in a classroom, there's this really amazing analysis and critical analysis that happens when students have questions. Because you get questions as a professor that you might not have thought about. And so forcing you to think in that way on your feet is actually something that is so valuable. And, you know, I'm not even talking about, you know, the skills to think on your feet as a lawyer in the courtroom. I'm talking about this, the skills to think critically about something just that's right in front of you that you're working on and to be able to ask those outside of the box questions. And so there was, a, there's, as you said, a ton of value that they didn't see and it ended up not being the right place for me. And so, you know, for anybody out there listening, I think that it's so important that you know the value of your experiences. You know the value of what you bring to the table. And I think that it is so important that you learn how, and it's a learned skill that we we work on very hard here with our clients using many strategies is showcasing yourself. Showcasing yourself because it doesn't stop at the application, right? It's right. something that keeps going for the rest of your life, for any role, for any anything that you have, even if you decide not to work for somebody else, to become an employer, to run a company, to run a nonprofit, to run something. And you still are showcasing yourself, your abilities, your capabilities, your, your the significance of your experiences. And so showcasing yourself never, ever ends. And so it's one of the most important skills that you can learn and something that we work on here. Yeah, absolutely. So how about one more story each? Does that work for you? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm happy to share another story, which was, I think about a year into my legal practice, I had another interview with, it was, it's a leading, a leading litigation firm downtown and showed up to the interview and went into the boardroom and like right from the beginning, it, I felt like I was on the firing line. The guy, <laughs> the managing lawyer who owns the firm, who founded the firm is there. There was some person in the corner taking notes, but like not at the table with me. It was like they were like looking at me from like a weird angle, like at the corner of the boardroom, which I found very creepy and odd. It's like I was facing an an interrogation of some sort. And the first question that the lawyer asks me, and it was like in a serious voice. It was like, and I had been in practice at that point for two or three months, I think. He says, how many examinations for discovery have you conducted? which just completely took me aback because it was like he hadn't read my resume because I had been called to the bar two or three months before. 
So as a lawyer with three months of experience, how many discoveries could I possibly have conducted in three months? <laughs> just to, one, two? Yeah. I, just, I, I found it bizarre <laughs> because I had to tell them the truth. I mean, I didn't like one or two at that point. I sat in on some as an articling student, but like, <laughs> well, I don't, I wasn't really sure what type of answer I was supposed to get, you know, and then he kept telling me how the, the firm I was at at the time that I was thinking of leaving, how all the lawyers there were so nice, nice person. This is a nice person. And that's a nice person. I found it very strange because like, I wasn't there to comment on the personalities of my colleagues. Mm -hmm. Obviously, if I'm interviewing at his firm, I'm looking for a change. I just found that the, the, the questions were just so odd and like awkward. But I, what am I going to say? No, they're not a nice person. For all I know, he's going out for dinner with them tonight. Like, yeah. it's just a very awkward line of questioning. So I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, I was basically forced to just compliment my colleagues. Yeah. And the comfort, it was just the, the tone, the, the way he was speaking. It was like, it was just like an aggressive tone. It was like, it felt like I was like, I had done something wrong by coming to the interview. Like you were being examined. <laughs> yeah, that's what it felt like. Yeah. It was, I felt like, and then in my mind, there's like alarm bells going off. 10 seconds into this interview, I'm like, I'm not working here. I'm like, right. I don't care how much he offers me. I'm not working at this place. This guy is like, this, there's something strange here. And this the person in the corner is just taking notes the whole time. Mm -hmm. Looking at me from the side and not engaging, not asking a question, just like staring at me. So at the end of the interview, then I'm told this is a multi-stage process. We'll get back to you. And that was another like red flag to me. I'm like a multi-stage process as if, I, I don't know, I, I, it was for an associate lawyer job. It wasn't. Yeah. So it's not like it's the OCIs. This is a, this is a, an interview for an associate position. Yeah. For those who don't know, OCI means on-campus interviews, which happen at law firms or law schools rather, where law firms, certain law firms participate. And then they go through, they go through the interview process with the law students that's regulated by the law society with timelines that are set by the law society to hire them as students, either summer students or articling students. Yeah. So this interview was just, the whole vibe was very strange. And before the interview, I spoke to someone else I know who knew this lawyer. And I, I, I did during the interview try and like say, oh yeah, you know, like I volunteered at this such and such an organization. And so-and-so said they know you. It was like, Oh yeah, he's a nice guy. And he just continues as if like, he just didn't want to talk about the person who knows him, anything they have in common. It's just, it was just like all serious and all business. So for me, like it, it was, it was a clear sign that this was also not a place to be working just because how can I spend every day of my life there? Just I'm like, I can't wake up, come down town and, and this is my reality every day. And there was at the end of the day, it was, it was the correct choice. I think one of my colleagues from law school had ended up working at this firm and I spoke to them on the side. They didn't, they weren't there for more than a year. You know, they told me like, this place compensates you well, but like they have enormous expectations of you that are not realistic. And then they just ended up leaving. And then I spoke to another person, I think it was a legal recruiter a year or two later after this interview. And I actually chatted with them about the, that specific interview experience where I was like under under fire. And that legal recruiter, he says, oh, yes, it's a good thing you didn't work there. That place is turnover central. I was like, okay, so it wasn't just me. Now someone who's in the legal recruiting industry is telling me you made the right decision there. So I think the lesson from that is if, if you're made to feel so uncomfortable at an interview that you feel like you've done something wrong and personalities <laughs> just don't sync with you, then yeah. Then really, it's not worth it. Just keep looking. If you're looking for another job or you're doing around for a job, it's just not worth it. You, the personalities really have to sync. You have to sync with the person you're working. Otherwise, it's, it's just it's just forced every single day, and it's not going to be pleasant. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I totally agree with you. I'll follow up with another. How about I'll follow up with another bad interview experience, and then let's both give one good one. Sure. <laughs> to end the episode. Okay. So this next interview experience that I had was, do you remember when it was? It was, oh, I think it was for, for articling, I think. Yeah. Because I was interviewing for an articling position and it was this firm that was a big firm, well-established in the area that I was looking for. And I had this interview. I was supposed to meet with one of the partners, but instead I got there and I was given a pass. So 
I had to wear this like lanyard with a pass on it. That wasn't the bad part of the interview. And the person who greeted me for the interview, albeit not in a friendly way at all, was like a first year associate who I had sort of known through various networks. And so they bring me up to a boardroom. They sit down next to me. And there's another woman there. I, I, she was the wife of a partner. She wasn't a lawyer at the firm. She was the wife of a partner who was sitting in on the interview. Okay, fine. So this associate, who really, quite frankly, has no business interviewing me or anybody for that matter, because they were like fresh out of out of articling, had and I know this person, no interview experience, no previous experience to speak of, you know, real professional development. They were like a first year associate at this firm. They sat down and they had like these very prescribed questions for me, which is fine. They were probably given them by, you know, somebody who couldn't make it to the interview. No one was taking notes. They asked me, what experience do you have that will be valuable here? Which is a fine question. Absolutely fine. I started to answer. And I swear to you, not 10 seconds in, this person sits up, puts their arms on the desk and says, that's not what I asked you. And I said, oh, I'm sorry, what? They said, you're not answering my question. And I said, oh, if I could just continue, I really hadn't even gotten a full sentence out. And they continued to sort of like, let me speak for another few seconds. And so I continued to answer the question and they said, that's not what I asked you. And I had been like, I was well prepared. I was getting like, I had already gotten offers at this point. I was wondering if I should work at this firm. Like, it's not like I didn't know how to interview. And that's not what I asked you. And so I said, okay, because all of a sudden I knew like this was not going to go my way if I wasn't even going to be able to speak in the interview. So I said, okay. And I sort of like really finished my answer, like very quickly in like four words so that they couldn't interrupt. And then I just, I sat back. And I listened for the next one. And they asked me another very reasonable question. And I started to answer. And I, again, 10 seconds in, they said to me, that's not what I asked you. I said, well, if you would just let me continue for a moment, I I really hadn't even gotten the full sentence out. And they said, no, you're not answering my questions. Are you unable to answer questions? And I was absolutely dumbfounded. I was absolutely dumbfounded. I didn't know what to do. I looked at the other woman who was there and she just like stared back at me as if this was normal. And I looked back at the interviewer and I said, okay, who was this? Who was the associate at this firm, one of the associates? And I said, okay, is there anything else that I can, that I can tell you? She asked me another very reasonable question. And I started to answer. And again, the same thing, the same thing. And I started to answer and she sits forward and she said, that's not what I asked you. And I said, okay, no problem. And so I, then the other woman did step in and she did ask about, you know, some aspect of my experience. I had copies of my resume with me. So I gave them each a copy at the very beginning. Of course, one of them didn't even look at it. The, the associate didn't even look at it, but the, the, the wife of the partner who was there did. And she asked a, a very reasonable question and I was permitted to answer. And the partner's wife who was there said, you know, thank you for coming in. And I said, thank you very much. It was nice to meet you. And I looked at the associate who was interviewing me, who I'd never met before. I just knew of them. I'd never met them before. And I said, nice to meet you too. She gave me a blank stare and held out her hand. And I thought she was holding out her hand to shake my hand. And so I went to reach out to shake her hand. She goes, your pass. And so I was like, oh, <laughs> oh I get, okay. So I handed her my pass and she goes, elevators that way. I said, okay, have a great day. And I left and I got into the car and I bawled and I called you and I said, I don't think I'm ever going to get, like, I don't, I I don't understand what just happened. Like, I don't understand. And you, you, I think knew who this person was too. And you said, okay, something is obviously off there. You know, we actually had a, had a colleague who worked at that firm too. Anyway, it, in the moment, it felt like, even though I had gotten other offers for some reason, in the moment when something horrible like that happens, you just feel like all of your options are gone. 
And you reminded me that I had other options and that this wasn't somewhere that I was going to end up. And and everything did work out totally, totally fine. And everything happens for a reason. And now I can tell that story. But that was, I would say that would be a bad experience in an interview. <laughs> that was a bad interview experience. Yeah, for sure. And obviously, look, if, if there's two people interviewing you and they think that this person who's behaving inappropriately and being rude is someone who should be conducting interviews, then like, it's just a sign of dysfunction within the organization. For sure. So you know, the fact is some people should not be conducting interviews, especially when it's one thing if you want to have a, a more junior employee in an interview, but they shouldn't be taking the lead for the more senior person. And especially when they obviously have attitude and problems and there seems to be on a power trip of some sort. Yeah. You know, and again, that's just another sign. I mean, the behavior is just a sign. Like, this is not a place you want to work. Yeah. Because these are who your colleagues are going to be. Do you that's want right. to wake up, rush to work, and this is the first person you see? No. No, that sounds like a terrible existence. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's like a horrible <laughs> time. And so that was that. And I think from that experience, what I learned was that, you know, you never know what you're going to walk into at an interview. You can only control yourself and the way that you react and to always just remain calm and carry on because there are better things waiting around the corner for you. That's right. So how about a good experience? Sure. Well, actually, this takes me back to when I was in law school. It was one of my summer jobs. I was looking for a summer job about two months into this. It was a month into the summer already. It just so happened that there was a large company not too far from where I worked, where I, where I lived, sorry, at the time, about a five-minute drive that was looking for a summer student. So I went in for the interview. First of all, I was very happy that the office was very close to my house because like, I was used to interviews meant going all the way downtown. I didn't live downtown. It meant long commute, being stressed, getting there on time. So I went into my house and I went there and first I met with an HR rep at the time. This is a well-known company. Met with one of their HR reps and you know, they asked me a lot of questions. It was kind of, they were, kind of, she, they were, they were nice, but you know, trying to, I, I guess, really dig deep into certain questions, issues, experiences I had, which was fine. It was all friendly. And then I met with their general counsel at the time. The interview was very friendly. It was very friendly, mostly because it, on a personality level, we were getting along. You know, they liked my experience. They it was surprisingly for a large company that has a legal department, they seem to be very interested in the fact that I was able to work at a legal clinic in a more difficult area of the city where I volunteered for about two years at the time. And they said to me, they're like, well, if you can work there and you can handle the clients there, you can certainly work here. And then they offered me the job. It was a big lift to my morale at the time because yeah. it had been a very difficult experience trying to find jobs at that point in law school. So... Yeah, and that was a, it was it was a great job where I worked for the summer and then for I believe the year after as well on a part time basis. So it was yeah, it was just I, I think it was a good interview experience because it wasn't so awkward and forced. It was just more of a conversation. You know, again, it wasn't like an interrogation. Obviously, they had to know certain information. I had to provide references, but at the same time, you know, I was surprised. It was such a large, it's a well known company that the interview process was actually quite friendly, which. You know, in contrast to some smaller companies, smaller law firms I'd worked at or interviewed at, the the larger company actually had a much more friendly and human interview experience. It wasn't so awkward and it wasn't so full of, in my opinion, awkward personalities. So it led to a summer job and it was a great experience. And also like, you know, once I worked there, you know, I was... There were, there were a lot of good people at the company to speak to. So overall, I'd say that was a, that was a good interview experience and because we were just able to click on a personal level and it wasn't all about serious issues it was just like do we work together like what do you do in your free time where do you live oh you live five minutes down the street like more on more of a human level they were interested in me rather than try to grill me about you know say legal issues at the time Mm -hmm. yeah yeah Yeah. and and you liked it there yeah, it was a great work experience at the time. Yeah, I was, I really had no complaints and, you know, I was there for full time and part time for, I'd say about a year. Yeah. And even now in our firm, you, you still, like, we still talk about, oh, like, the, you know, this is something that happened there. Like you still refer to things that you learned there and they're still applicable today. 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. The fact is like your first jobs, you'll remember your first jobs and what happened and those lessons you'll learn in any type of workplace. Mm -hmm. Yep, that's true. That's true. Yeah. So I have a few really good interview experiences that I'm trying to decide between. One of them is the firm that I articled at. It was a really, really great experience articling. It was an amazing experience there, but also the interview process was really, really awesome. Great people. I think maybe I'll talk about that experience another time because it was just like, it, it, there, there were so many things that I learned there that I carry with me to this day. And, but I think I'll tell you about my experience interviewing for summer jobs at, at law firms. So I had been sending out my resume, you might remember, and I think I must have sent out like 60 or 70 resumes, right? And at the time I had a PhD, of course, because I was in law school already. So I had already finished my PhD. And the response that I got from, so firstly, 75% of the firms that you apply to will never even respond, <laughs> which is so demoralizing to not even get a response. Like, I feel like you should at least get an automatic reply. Thank you for your, you know, inquiry. Someone will reach out to you or something, but nothing. You just, it's like radio silence and, and, you know, there's just this void of waiting. So I had been applying. So 25% of the, or 75% of the firms don't even respond to you, which is, and, and you know, I had so much experience at this point. I had worked at law firms and I thought, man, if they're not even responding to me, like, what is going on here? And then the other, you know, 20% or something got back to me and they said, you know, we're not looking for somebody with your level of experience because they saw that I had two graduate degrees. And they, they would say to me, you know, you're too, you're too advanced for this role. And that shocked me because I, I saw it as a huge benefit that I would be overly competent in the role, I would be able to do everything that they needed. And I was willing to learn. And I had the proven ability to learn, learn on my feet, learn quickly and think and write, right? Which is a huge right. skill that firms look for is can you write? And if you can't write in law, you're going to have a difficult time. And so it shocked me when I received that response. And over email, there's really, it's tough to do any convincing over email. Like you really want a phone call or an interview in order to be able to talk about it. And then I, I, I did interview at this one firm. I think you drove me to that interview. Do you remember? I think yes. you drove me to yes. that interview. So I go in, I sit down with the partner who ended up just being like such, just such a funny person. It was, it was, honestly, one of the best interview experiences that I've ever had. And I sat down, they had my resume in front of them. Of course, you know, I had my printed out copies and I offered it to them and they said, nope, I've got it right here. And I thought, oh, that's awesome. You came prepared and they're, you know, they were, you know, so receptive. And they started like flipping through my resume and they were, they just said to me, so you want to work here? <laughs> and I said like, yeah, that's why I'm here. And they said, but you know, you have a, a PhD. And I said, yeah. And so in my mind, I was like, oh, finally, someone's giving me a freaking chance because now I can have this conversation. Like now I can have this conversation. And so they said, but you have a PhD. And I said, yeah. And they said, so, you know, but you're so advanced. Like, why would you want to work as a summer student here? And I said, because, you know, yeah, while I'm advanced in academia, I'm new in law. I'm new here. I've never, you know, done the kind of legal work. You know, I worked at law firms, but it's very different when you're, you know, like a, an admin assistant. I, I had been a researcher at law firms that had done work in, in my in my research area. But it was very different being a summer student than a researcher. Because as a summer student, you're working on the legal documents, you're working on the proceedings, you're working on the day-to-day Whereas as the researcher that I had been at firms, I was working on research that was bringing the academia that I had to the firms. So I said to this partner, I said, you know, yeah, I have the, that experience in academia, but I don't have this experience at a law firm. And they said, okay, so, you know, and we talked a little bit about the work and, and it was a very comfortable conversation. And Unlike, you know, these other experiences that happened much later that I've already told you about today and and more, which which maybe we'll talk about another time, you know, this partner just spoke to me like we were having a conversation and it was very natural and easy. And 
they basically said, okay, so like, you want the job? And I said, sure. (laughs) And then we started talking about like TV shows because they saw on my resume that I had been, I had been training in, in opera for, you know, 13 years before that. So then we started talking about this TV show and, you know, the music in the TV show and all this. And it was a, such a comfortable conversation. And at the end, the partner said again, like, you're sure you want to work here? And I said, yes. And it ended up being a great job that I stayed in for every single summer of law school. And then in my last two years of law school, so this, I, I got this position after, during my first summer in law school, then I worked there part-time through second year and through third year while I was teaching as a professor in the next building to my law school. And I was there for you know, two and a half years, maybe long, maybe just a little longer. And, and it ended up being great. I worked very, very closely with the other associates. I worked very, very closely with this partner and it was human. Like it was, it was great. And so that is a, is a really awesome experience. And so if, if that partner is listening to this, big shout out to you because <laughs> I had a great time. You know, it's just, it's so rare to find like cool people who treat you like a human being and who will sit you down or sit down with you and really want to get to know you in an interview rather than having, you know, prescribed, and sometimes prescribed questions are important, but to have prescribed questions that that are so rigid that they don't allow for any sort of conversation or humanness. And so I think that that is something that I learned, which, which I think intuitively I already knew, but being human is a really important part of not only interviewing, but also just life and working with other people and your advancement. Yeah. I mean, the, as I think, as you mentioned at the beginning, if you, when you're going to an interview, they're not just interviewing you, but you're also interviewing the company or the firm that you're, yeah. you're meeting with. So it's very important to really take, take it in. And some interviews are very long, some are very short, but it will certainly give you a sense as to the company culture, because whoever the company is, allowing to conduct interviews is obviously someone who's in some sort of authority there. And if, if you get along with them, great. If you just, if your gut instinct is telling you, like, I don't really want to be here. I don't like the way this is going. This is very awkward. Then don't work there. Right. It's that simple. Mm -hmm. This is your opportunity to like get a sense as to what the company is like or not like. Mm -hmm. Yep. And me and the associates and the partner ended up being really close, we ended up going for lunch, like, honestly, like almost, I I would say at least twice a week. It was great. And so really the interview, I think, is really telling for how the rest of your time there may go. Not always, but I think it's so important to take those, those hints from the interview as you're figuring things out and as you're determining, you know, what is your next best step. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Thanks for joining me, Jonathan. Thank you. (laughs) Thank you so much for joining us and we will see you next time. Thanks for listening to the Advancement Spot podcast. If you heard something today that helped you get one step closer to achieving the amazing life you want and you'd like to learn more about working with me, I'd love to hop on a call with you to see how we can help you. So follow me on Instagram at applyyourselfglobal and send me an email at hello at applyyourselfglobal.com. I'd love to hear from you. Remember to subscribe so you never miss an episode, leave this episode a review, and share this episode with somebody you think needs a boost of inspiration and actionable tools to help them succeed. Thanks for joining me and see you next week.